welcome to East Key, everybody. Um, described in The Guardian, no less, as a piratical beacon of culture. Um, <laughs> it's kind of hard to begin to express how amazing it is to be standing here, especially on this box. Um, I feel like the storm that's uh, coming in later is sort of sums up what it's been like trying to get this building started and then subsequently finished. Um, we're not quite there yet, but trying very hard. Um, but despite a collapsing harbour wall, a worldwide pandemic and a global economic crash, we did finally make it. Um, so all of the blood and sweat and quite a lot of tears and Spudge repeatedly telling us to hold our nerve uh, did pay off. Um, and it just makes me incredibly happy to see you all here. Um, but I'm going to cry already. <laughs> I'm going to really, really try and hold it together. Uh, but my co-directors and I are just absolutely delighted to welcome you all to East Key. And I was thinking especially about all of these descriptions of the building that have appeared in journals and newspapers over the last um, couple of weeks, piratical being one of them, but also elegantly jumbled, which I really like, friendly, eclectic, versatile, warm and joyful, but also enchanting, anarchic and experimental. Such lovely, generous words, which really are testament to the skill of the architects, Invisible Studio and Ellis Williams, and most specifically, of course, Piers Taylor and Mark Anstey. I'd like to be able to point them out, I have no idea where they are. They're both back there. Both back there, hiding at the back. Um, okay. I'm going to resist doing the forgive me joke at this point. Uh, okay, so Mark um, and Piers were really amazing in interpreting our brief, such as it was, uh, listening to us, responding to the feedback over repeated iterations, and navigating our differing and multiple opinions. And anyone who has been in a room with a bunch of onions, to use our collective noun, um, will know how challenging that can be. Add to this all of the site challenges here and more hurdles than you can possibly imagine, any of a hundred of which could have derailed this project entirely, but thankfully did not. Um, being a little bit pirate, I think, resonates with me particularly because it says something a little bit about on Onion and about us. It has a little bit of a sense of the rebellious, a little bit of a refusal to be cowed, a touch of that challenge to entrenched systems and power relations and a determined independence that characterise Onion, and that other reason we were able to keep on climbing all of the hurdles until it was done. Aside from the piratical, I think my favourite description of East Key is one that was used by several of the articles that have been published recently, but actually was first spoken by Watch It's own Sarah Summers, who's also somewhere here in this crowd, who describes how the arms of the building um, embrace the courtyard and are enveloping, but also face out to and embrace the town. She also described it as a cathedral of creativity, which I really love, and actually is a rather better term than beacon of culture. Um, personally, I think this is an important description because it resonates with that thing which is combining solidity and safety, but also lightness and some food for the soul. We talk a lot about attachment theory at Onion, um, and that need for deep roots and solid foundations in order to be free, to be creative and exploratory and curious. And the building here somehow is a, a sort of physical manifestation of those two vital parts that nourish us. The other thing that the building asks is about culture, about what and whose culture this is, a question we've been exploring and considering and pushing against since we started this crazy journey in three shipping containers back in 2013 and contains art from where all of this has really developed, was founded on the belief that who you are, where you're from, and what you have should not constrain your access to creative opportunity and cultural activity. And this remains a central concern for us. It's what we talk about as cultural justice. Who gets to engage with what? And on whose say so? This isn't a question about high art versus whatever other kind of art, um, but it's about relevance. And it's about the art that feels like it's ours, that resonates with us and speaks to us and listens with us and, in and includes us. Now, 
as most of you will know, Watch It has always been a place absolutely chock full of creativity and curiosity. So it's no surprise whatsoever that when Neville Gaby invited the community to express their feelings in a creative way for the opening exhibition, producing vessels that bottle the essence of Watch It's community. They did so with some gusto. Um, and I'd urge all of you, <laughs> if you can get through the crowds, to look at the bottles um, that sit on the shelves here. They include everything from boats and bathtubs to dancing and dogs and football and feasting and everything in between that animates culture and community here. As much as anything, I think, probably really appropriately at a party, culture is about the art of gathering. It's about repeated collective experiences and interactions and how these feed, up, feed ideas and aspiration and imagination. And this value in the importance of communal experience and simply being together comes through strongly, of course, in Neville Gaby's own work in this exhibition, which responds to the bottles and Neville's reflections on what builds and nourishes community informed by Watch It. Neville and Tessa Jackson, who co-curated the exhibition, wanted also to offer a platform to local artistic talent. And so invited and then commissioned Watch It's own tiki poet, Deanna Payne, to make a new work and film, which again explores the power of community and articulates the sheer exuberance and absurdity that is this place and its people. Alongside Dee and Neville's own work, American artist Suzanne Lacey was invited to represent her work, The Circle and the Square, which you can see in Gallery 2 on the first floor. It's a really poignant piece of filmmaking that explores the demise of the textile mills in Pendle in Lancashire and has obvious relevance here. And it reflects on what holds us together, regardless of background. So please do take your time to enjoy the exhibition. Our huge thanks and congratulations to Neville and Tessa and Dee, who are all here tonight. And of course, as are, of course are many of Watch It's bottlers. Now, um, just as this exhibition is the hands, the work of many hands, so of course is the building. And that means I have to slightly tediously, but importantly, um, extend my thanks and our thanks to some people. And I will try really hard not to make it too much of a roll call and I'm bound to miss some people and I'm really sorry if I miss you and I apologize. Um, but please know that if you are forgotten or not mentioned, it's not because you're not valued, but because this building has been such a collective effort that I will literally be here all night if I name everyone. And I guess most of you would rather just get on with drinking and dancing. Um, firstly though, I do need to extend our gratitude and pride. There's a tiny baby, Lyra, who's just smiling at me through a window down here. <laughs> Thank you, Lyra. Um, so, um, we really want to extend our gratitude to all of the design team who've brought this building into being. Um, as I've already said, kudos to Mark and Piers especially for being open-minded and brave and resilient enough to work with us and pull this off. Um, but there were many others involved in the design process. For our education space, um, a young architecture collective called Piers Plus Fame, working with an environmental psychologist, Helen King, um, and artist Andy Council, Andy's here somewhere as well, um, spent time with pupils from Minehead, Minehead Middle and Danesfield School. And the result is a wonderful, playful kind of anti-classroom designed by them all to cultivate curiosity and culture and to generate activity and joy. Um, so our thanks to that, especially to the next generation, all the kids who were involved in designing the building. And please, all of you, go and see the fruits of their efforts um, up on the first floor in the curator space. Um, Owen and George also, with a host of others, um, Christian particularly, uh, somewhere at the back from Lean Structures, who's an engineer, but many, many people have been involved in designing and building the five accommodation pods that perch on the first and second floor platforms. Our oh, thanks to all of you for your energy and ideas and your continuing patience. Um, the same also to Mark Dix and Nikki Robinson from LT Studio, who are our landscape architects and who have managed to put up with our constant revisions remarkably calmly. Um, 
Although we definitely made it more complicated for ourselves by working with four different architecture practices on this building, that doesn't even scratch the surface of the extraordinary breadth of skills and expertises and talent that have been involved in getting a building like this to fruition. Our thanks to all of the design team, from the structural engineers um, and Momentum, I think Richard's here, so thank you, um, quantity surveyors, acoustic experts, and everything in between. It's been a really a, a team effort. And the same, of course, is true for the construction itself. So Midas were the main contractor, but a complex build like this comes about through the work of many subcontractors and specialists from all corners. In the last few weeks of the build, um, <laughs> over the summer, in our wisdom, we at Onion Collective decided to get on site and help, <laughs> which I'm, they were thrilled by, as you can imagine. Um, we saw, I think we helped. It was, a real, uh, it was a real lesson for us all in the skills and indeed the creativity yeah. that is to be found in breathing life into a building. From the concrete specialists who had to learn how to work with this beautiful red local sand that has created our gorgeous pink walls, to metal cladders who hailed here from Lithuania and Russia, to Joel and his team from Storm Seal who made an art form out of plasterboarding and joined us at Watch It Festival. <laughs> Simon and his many electricians from Interheat, who wired the brains of this building, now hidden in these welcoming walls. Special thanks also to Bob Cooper, who's somewhere. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Um, who's Midas' site manager over the, last, um, the last latter part of the build, and whose optimism and get stuck in attitude could rival even Spadger's. <laughs> um, to all of you, really, this is a fantastic building and we are so grateful for your support and the hard work, even when it felt never ending and unfeasibly difficult. So that's about 200 people already so far. Um, but before we even got close to the build, East Key was made possible by the enthusiasm and encouragement of so many others. The council, now Somerset West and Taunton Council, were positive and progressive, I think, in granting us a lease. Um, and Chris Hall and Brendan Clear deserve our special gratitude. Um, of course, also, um, all of those organisations who were confident enough in us to give us the capital funds to actually make it happen. There were six major funders of East Key. The government's Coastal Communities Fund contributed £5 million, the largest single grant ever awarded through that programme. Beyond this, financial support of the Arts Council England and the Leps Getting Building Fund have both been crucial, not least in getting the building through the sizeable and occasionally terrifying impact of the pandemic and Brexit. Other funding came from the brilliant Esme Fairburn Foundation at a point when, when a particular hurdle threatened to, to topple all of it, and Somerset Community Foundation through the HPC Fund, which provided the last piece of funding needed to complete the build. Finally, our special thanks to Magnox Socioeconomic Fund and the NDA, and particular gratitude to Hath Morris from Magnox, who believed in us long before anyone else took us seriously, and who provided the vital first brick funding. Some other people who deserve our thanks are the artists and tenants who occupy the many workshops and studios here, many of whom have been part of this journey also for years. Um, Sue and Jim and Sarah and Andy and Kate, and Alison and Mel and Georgina, you will know who you are, and thank you for putting your faith in us, really, for so long, as well as those who've joined us recently and are already part of the East Key family. The studios and um, workshop spaces are all open at the moment and will be for a bit, weather permitting, so please do go and have a look at them, um, including uh, the Prince Studio and Gecko Ella on, at, in the courtyard where I think Andy particularly is doing geological wine, whatever that might mean. Um, so please go and explore that. Thanks also to the many Watcher organisations who have been along for the ride, from the Conservation Society to the CCT and the Town Council to the Marine Group, and Sam's Deli, I thought we should mention, who have literally sustained us through some of the hardest of times. And outside of Somerset's uh, borders, where we do venture occasionally, um, we are part, I mean, a part of a movement of cultural organisations and social enterprises who are also our family and really help us to stay sane. And many of them are here today. We are stronger and able to achieve more because of all of you. 
Finally, of course, the brilliant, outspoken, positive, collective, and thoughtful people of this town. We hope we have done you proud. I will mention some onions too, but firstly, I just really, really want to embarrass Sean, who's hiding in the kitchen, but probably can just about hear me, who's our assistant chef, and it's his birthday today. <laughs> so happy birthday, Sean. Um, he's a total star, and we owe him a night off for working extremely hard this one. Um, so this project really is about culture and creativity and about social mobility in this area. And it's also always been about jobs. Um, there are 27 onions at the last count, which is extraordinary. Um, and there are alongside the 27 of us and counting, at least another 20 people making their living in this building. The majority of the onion team live in Watch It and no one is further away than Lydia St. Lawrence or Minehead. And I say this not to somehow suggest that it matters how local you are or where you are from. In fact, we believe quite the opposite. It's the beautiful, messy mix of people and place that makes for the best fun and the best culture. But rather to make a point about just how much talent there is in West Somerset. Um, onions in particular, I'm not gonna single anyone out. Not even Spadge, <laughs> little bit. But just to say, on behalf of myself and my fellow directors, you all blow our minds every day. <laughs> With your positivity, your resilience, your laughter, your openness and your generosity. I can't imagine anything I'd rather be doing or people I'd rather be doing it with. People keep asking me, <laughs> now the building's open, what are you gonna do? And I'm like, oh, well, have you not noticed that we've got this huge building to run? Um, Piers actually said to us very early on and has said all the, all the way through, it's not really actually about the building. It's about what happens inside it. It's about the possibility and opportunity and change that comes about because it exists. It's about gathering and creativity and culture. And it's about schools and toddlers and families. It's about the people who work here, who grow their businesses here, who create art here, who make paper here. It's about all those who change their minds here and find inspiration here or find hope here or find friends here. And it's about a different, kinder, more human future. And it's about connection. And mostly, of course, it's about community. Please enjoy yourselves tonight. Thank you all.